So we're here at ASD Motown headquarters in the workshop. All the guys are building dampers and we're here with Willem, one of the engineers. And this video is all about the shock dyno. What is a shock dyno? Why is it important? And what is it used for here at Motown ASD? So Willem's gonna take you through all the details, how this works, what does it show us on the computer, and why do you get that graph in the box when you buy a Motown ASD kit? All right, so we have an ASC 5300 damper on the dyno, and Willem's gonna run it through a bunch of different speeds so we can get the graph. There's also some final adjustments in the canister head that he's gonna make to finalize the kit. So can you kind of explain what you're adjusting in the head there? When when you adjust the, the canister, you have the, the, the large knob that's over there, and that adds preload on the Belleville washers that are inside. And we can do some fine tuning on the preload before we put a knob on to make sure that the left and the right damper are perfectly matched. So the adjustments are matched. When you adjust two clicks on the right, it matches the same as two clicks on the left yep. as far as how far open or closed yep. the damper is. The dyno is used a lot to verify when a kit is built correctly. When I was here training to build dampers with Willem, he had me build a three-way damper. We put it all together with the pieces that we pick from the parts pick. We verified all the pieces, we measured them, we cleaned them. I put the shock on the dyno and the graph did not match the standard three-way that it was supposed to match. We had to disassemble the shock and what do we find inside? Like a piece of anodized or a piece of... Yeah, small anodized. A literally a, a piece of sand was inside yep. the dyno. And just a piece of sand inside the shock can show on the graph and make sure that, that we rebuild this or you know verify that it's done so you guys get exactly what you ordered. But one of the reasons we put the dyno graph in the box is to show you that not only your dampers were verified on the dyno, but that graph it verifies that dampers were built correctly and that they were set up correctly from start, which is super important when you put them on a car. In, inside of your box, you will get a graph and the top line of your graph will show the compression damping. The lower half of the graph will show the rebound damping. There are two lines on it. The one is fully closed and one is fully open. And that represents the knobs on the damper. On the, the bottom line shows the velocity in millimeters a second. And on the line on the side, it shows the force in, in kilograms. So below here is the, the same graph when the high speed and the rebound was still halfway open. And I started turning the low speed knob then and you can see that the low speed starts moving so this is four different low speed positions both rebound and compression can be adjusted separately and in this case we have got the rebound halfway open and the compression halfway open but you could have the rebound fully open and the compression fully closed without them interfering if you've got your rebound and compression knobs halfway open then the graph line will be halfway between uh, fully open and fully closed as well as shown here on the screen issues will show differently on the graph so if there's like a small piece of debris inside that will show a different kind of graph than a scratch on the piston on the graph you can see on the closed line that there is like like a knee happening if the knee isn't there then probably there is some kind of debris inside of the system if there's like a burr inside then you will see that the knee isn't as sharp but it's more like a progressive line then we will take it off the dyno open it up again clean every parts and assemble it put it back on the dyno and see if it's better now there are two sides on the piston the compression side and the rebound side if we change on one of both sides the valving then the graph will change accordingly on that same side. So if we add extra shims on the compression side, then we will see that the compression line will change. Each vehicle has a different graph. And what we do, we compare each graph with the different uh, vehicles that we built in the past to make sure that every damper will get the same consistency. Putting the shocks on the dyno is the last step that we do to make sure it's 100% fine and then we put it in the box and ship it over. So well and pretty much summed up all the uses of the dyno, why it's important here. Another thing I'll add is some customers with some other dampers or they've actually built dampers locally, they can actually send the graphs into Willem we can compare and we can try to get close to their graph. First, when we look at the graph, we try to uh, determine what kind of piston is used since different kind of piston will get a different kind of graph. We then get a piston that matches the, the style of the graph and then we start adding shims until we get a match. So you can match it 95% to what the graph is normally, yep. to what they're sending. Yep. It's not gonna be an exact match because there's too many variables, but we can get very close. And a lot of my motorsport customers, a lot of my race teams, they know exactly what they're wanting and they can communicate that with only the graphs. So they don't even have to send the damper in. And then we can build a Motown or an AST based on that graph. Thanks guys. If you have any other questions about anything we do here with the dyno, you could email us info at ast-suspension.com.